Order. Question number eight. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, this question is to the Minister of Immigration and asks, uh, does he stand by all his statements? If so, how? The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Oh, Mr Speaker, yes I do. I particularly stand by my statement that any political party promising to reduce net migration to 10,000 would decimate industries and regions and that this government is not prepared to throw those regions under a bus at a time when they're growing so strongly. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. If, as he claimed, and I quote him, he's toughened the English language rules, end of quotes, in October 2016, can he confirm that serious widespread fraud with regard to the English language requirement was a major reason for him doing so? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Well, Mr Speaker, yes, I do confirm that there were concerns about the way in which the English language tests were being conducted uh, and also with the fact that the resident application for skilled migrants included uh, 12 months of work in a New Zealand workplace, which didn't in and of itself uh, constitute um, competent English, so we changed it. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. Is he concerned that when Nigel Bickle, Deputy CEO of the Ministry of Business Innovation and Employment and Head of Immigration New Zealand, had investigators look into this back in November 2015, they found, for example, 95 out of 98 applicants were not asked for any evidence that that met minimum English proficiency standards? Speaker. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Well, Mr Speaker, I would need more details about the specific uh, uh, example the member is asking about. I presume it's in the international education space at that point. There were certain categories of tertiary education provider that were exempted from requirements. That was changed after November 2015. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, right, Honourable Winston. When is he going to take some responsibility, for example, about rules, whatever they are, being openly and routinely flouted when another MB manager, Paul Aram in this case, found out in June 2016 that out of 105 applications of that number, only one applicant was required, that's one, uh, to provide a, an international English language test certificate. One out of 105. Under you. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not quite sure what the question is, but what I would say is that when you have more than three and a half million people crossing the borders, nearly 800,000 visas being approved every year, and a set of rules, some people try and bend them. We fix that, we improve that, and we have far fewer problems than we have had in the past. Big question. Supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. If you've got two investigations by senior people within his department and they're finding that there are thousands of people who have committed fraud, what has he done about it when clearly MB investigator, another person, Theodore Ashton, has concluded that thousands did break the law? The Mr. Honourable Speaker. Michael Woodhouse. We do what the public would expect us to do. We investigate and we prosecute. Question number nine, Brett Hudson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to